Hello, if you're building or migrating to Stealth Burner, these top 10 tips should prove useful. When I decided to build and migrate to Stealth Burner, I found I had questions, I had some concerns, and then during the process I ran into some issues. So I tried to document all of those, and the most important, at least that I ran into, I've tried to document in this video. Let's get started with number one. I started noticing there was a problem with the very first piece I tried to assemble. This piece is actually made of two parts. Stealth Burner was designed with very close tolerances. In fact, it even says so right here in the manual. And so my first clue were these two pieces not fitting together. This turned out to be a huge problem throughout the rest of the build. I highly recommend the very first thing you do before you start printing all the different parts for Stealth Burner is print out these two pieces and test fit them. This brings us to tip number two, which are the bolts. Stealth Burner has quite a few bolts, a lot of them. I didn't have them all, I needed to order them. You can save some weight here by uh, simply ordering, instead of steel, titanium. And in this case, you see the titanium bolts weigh 21 grams, which is half the weight of the steel, which are about 42 grams. So it's a quick and easy way to save some weight. If you spent any time looking around on the web, you've probably seen many people with 3D printers complain about what they call issue six, which are these uneven deposits in height of filament on a print. But also if you spend some more time looking around, the cause of this seems to be cheap gears <laughs> that are used in the print head. And so I highly recommend that you don't skimp here and get a BMG full extruder set like we have here. I've also heard Triangle Labs is very good as well, but I haven't tried it myself. Tip four, the NEMA 14 pancake motors. When looking for these motors from LDO, there are actually two that look and appear almost exactly the same. Or the major differences between them is one of them is only 17 millimeters deep and 70 grams in weight. The second one is 20 millimeters in depth and 85 grams in weight. These are both the same price. Other than the weight, the other key difference, the heavier motor seems to run a little bit cooler. In the past, I've had trouble with keeping the extruder motor cool, so I went for the slightly heavier, slightly deeper motor. But either one of these should work perfectly. Just be aware of whichever one you're selecting. Tip five has to do with the wiring of the motors. Most people are aware there are no standards for the colors of the wires and how they're set up across the different manufacturers. It turns out there's no standard even within a manufacturer. In ca this case, we have LDO and the wiring is not the same between these two different motors. The colors are different and the colors mean different things. To avoid confusion when you are building and connecting, um, take a look here in the lower right corner of the schematic um, or the technical requirements of the motors. These um, A, B, C, D exactly correlate to uh, what those wires mean. And so if you match those up to your pre-existing motor, they'll know exactly how to connect them to the wires that you've installed previously. Tip six has to do with supports when you're 3D printing your stealth burner parts. I'm probably the only person in history since the creation of Stealth Burner to have done this, but by mistake, I had supports on in Cura when I printed this. And you can see it looks really quite rough here as I tried to yank out the supports. It was not easy. I needed some small files and it still never really got clean. There are actually parts where I could not get the supports out at all. So before you print out all the parts for Stealth Burner, please make sure you spend the time. Just check one last time to make sure supports aren't on. Another thing you need to check on is your Z-seam alignment. As you can see here, this Z-seam showed up right smack in the middle of exactly where I don't want it to appear. Make sure <laughs> that you adjust this ideally so it fits in a corner or somewhere else so you don't have to look at it. Tip seven has to do with the carriage. If you're coming over from Afterburner, the carriage you used before as is typically won't work. 
And so there is a new carriage that you'll need to print out if you're using a single MGN12 rail. There is also a carriage that's out if you're using the dual MGN9 rails. And then if you're using a single MGN9 rail, Stealth Burner uh, does not actually contain the design of the carriage for that. So this one, that this third one I just showed you here is one that I've modified and made available. I'll place the link in the description that tells you how to get to this carriage. Tip eight is about the gear ratio of the extruder. Stealth Burner uses this pancake motor and that gear on top is not the same as the previous motor on the previous extruder. So the first thing you need to do is go into your printer.cfg file and scroll all the way down here. And when you get to the extruder section, which is right here, uh, you'll see a setting down here called gear ratio. And most likely, if you're using standard stealth burner, your gear ratio is set to be 50 to 17, which was okay for that one, but it's not okay for this. So the first thing you'll need to do before you do anything else in terms of testing anything, you'll have to add a gear ratio 50 to 10, which is the new gear ratio, and you'll have to comment out the old one. And once you've done this, you can hit save and restart before you do any kind of testing whatsoever. Tip nine is more initial testing. Things might have shifted. I found for me, things weren't exactly in the same position they were before. I have no idea why. Uh, but before you do a full home, home at least the X and Y, and then jog the print head and the nozzle over over the Z end stop and start to move it slowly by hand just to make sure that things haven't moved or things haven't shifted. I don't really know why other than maybe I made a slight mistake on the belt and things have shifted over just a little bit. But as it turns out, I actually had to shift the position in software, meaning in my printer.cfg file by two millimeters. Uh, you also should go ahead and if you have um, uh, clicky, if you've got a Euclid probe, if you've got a nozzle brush, again, just move these over by hand, jogging using the interface of mainsail or fluid, and then go and compare those settings to what you expect to have in your CFG files you may find some of them need to be adjusted a little bit. And it's good you do that now, because if you don't do it now and you run some initial tests like a home or a, a calibrate or whatever the case may be, you may find yourself with a head crash, which is something you really don't want to have happen. In addition to that, it's probably also a really good idea to go back to the Voron documentation for the initial, initial startup checks and scroll your way almost all the way down to the bottom and there's the extruder extruder calibration section or the e-steps you should probably do this as well this can probably do a little tuning again the gear ratio has changed might as well make it perfect and make sure you're not over or under extruding so that concludes my top 10 tips for anyone that's interested in migrating to or building stealth burner if you found this video useful or helpful in any way uh, please feel free to comment but maybe even better please go ahead and subscribe thank you very much for watching and uh, i hope this has worked well for you